Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for March the 27th. I'm Jonathan Kinsler. Today's scripture reading is found in Joshua chapters 3 to 5 and Luke chapter 5 verses 1 through 16. The title of my devotional is Purpose of Miracles. And we're going to be looking at Joshua chapter 4 verses 23 and 24. And there it says, For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until you had crossed, just as the Lord your God had done to the Red Sea, which he dried up before us until we had crossed, that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, so that you may fear the Lord your God forever. This miracle had greater significance than to simply allow the Israelites to move from one side of the Jordan to the other. I mean, just think, if, if that's all that he wanted them to be able to do, he could have, they could have built boats or rafts or some kind of system of fording the river. Um, but rather, God chooses um, a miraculous means, and he has specific purposes for it. So we need to understand God doesn't just do miracles because we want them. He does them because they serve also his purposes. There's all kind God can meet our needs, but he's the one who chooses what will best accomplish uh, what we're asking for and especially his will. Now we see that there are two greater divine purposes than simply the Israelites moving from one side of the river to the other. First of all, all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty. The miracle was a testimony to God's power and his role as judge. God's deliverance for the Israelites resulted in Jericho's acknowledgement of his sovereignty and their loss of courage. We see this, for example, in Joshua 2 verses 10 to 11, where it says regarding the Red Sea, uh, For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt, and when you and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Zion and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. When we heard it, our hearts melted, and no courage remained in any man any longer because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven, above and on earth beneath. So it shows that um, they recognized who God was. There's no God like him and how he responds, how he uh, acts toward his people. How could anyone stand before them when God is fighting for them? Joshua 5 verse 1 also gives testimony to the effect of, of this miracle of, of them crossing the, Red sea, or the, the Jordan on dry land. Um, There it says, Now it came about when all the kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan to the west and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea heard how the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan before the sons of Israel until they had crossed, that their hearts melted and there was no spirit in them any longer because of the sons of Israel. So, um, their hearts melted. There was no spirit in them any longer. It recalls the tenth plague in, in Egypt, which not only convinced Pharaoh to release the Israelites, but it also revealed God's purpose to bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. In Exodus 12, verse 12, we see that, that this is his purpose, that he is, he is executing his judgments even over all the gods. And even as he did over all the gods of Egypt, we know that God is one day going to demonstrate his power over all the gods of all the earth. And he's been doing that for the past 2,000 years, and he will do it until he returns once and for all. So it also goes on to say, secondly, in in Joshua um, 4, verse 24, so that you may fear the Lord. This great miracle is a virtual reenactment of God's dividing the Red Sea, Red sea and it should still, um, and it should instill reverence and awe in His people, and bring forth the appropriate response of worship and obedience. The people of Israel should know that the Lord is God, that He delivers them, that He is the one who acts um, in ways with miracles and, and power that no other God is able to do. No one can do what God can do. We need to put our trust in Him. Um, they would be able to give witness also to others of what this great miracle means. That's really important also. God can do a miracle, but it's up to God's people to declare to others, what does it mean? God sent Jesus, who suffered and died for us in our place, and God raised him from the dead. It's our job to tell people what that means, that he died in our place, that he took our sin upon him, and that he was raised, that we could have newness of life as well, but only for those who receive him. And if we don't tell others, they're not going to get it on their own. 
It was always God's purpose to raise up Israel to be a light to the nations. Um, that you, Israel, might fear the Lord, and also that we might walk in on reverence before God as well. And for, with the intention that all the families of the earth would be blessed through them, and all the families of the earth would be blessed through us. That's always been God's purpose in, um, in choosing a people out of all the peoples for Israel, and also choosing Christians out of um, out of the nations that we would declare, we would witness to what God has done and what God is doing. So God's signs and wonders continue to have this dual purpose for Christians. It's a testimony of God's greatness and reverence for him. Jesus' re resurrection reveals God's power over death, evil, and Satan. The Christian's testimony should be that the hand of the Lord is mighty um, and we need to live in a way that witnesses to that fact. So do you stand in awe of what God has done for you? Are you a living testimony of who God is? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are the great God and you do many mighty miracles, none greater than sending Jesus. But also in our lives, you bring um, and, and do miracles for us out of your great compassion and mercy. But on one hand, so that we might know and have reverence for you, but also so that we would tell others that, Lord, what you do for us, you'll do for others. You love them. You love others just as you love us. And we thank you, Lord. You show no partiality. Uh, you love the people of the whole world. Help us to appreciate that and understand that you've called us to be your witnesses. In your name we pray. Amen.